Well, cool. Um, so we have a very timely um, Instagram live for everyone today. Um, and I think that like everyone on Monday morning woke up to this really awful news about like the current state of climate change. And um, so you had recently written this article about droughts. Um, and so this IPCC report oh highlighted, you know, what our new normal is going to kind of look like with um, these increased weather events and extreme drought conditions and all of the other things that um, are kind of surrounding climate change um, and especially how it's going to impact people in the U.S. Um, so, yeah. Droughts were something that the IPCC really highlighted in this report. And so um, it's something that we've been talking a lot about at Hydro-V because there are so many other um, ways that droughts can impact our, our lives other than just not having water available. Um, and so, yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today. And I'm, I'm really excited to... Um, dig into this. So, so like I just said, you know, when people think of droughts, they're automatically kind of thinking of, all right, we're just going to have less water available. Um, and so that's just kind of, you know, not the case. It's, it's way more than that. Um, and so you kind of highlighted it in your article, three of these major secondary consequences of drought, um, that, are often kind of going overlooked. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to dig into this. And I think it's also important to point out that, that this won't just impact people in the West, but people across the entire country and ultimately the entire world. Um, so Emily, what are these kind of three damages or secondary consequences that, that you, highlighted in your article. Yeah, so I definitely wanted to highlight, you know, we don't always see these consequences right away, just because most of the time when a drought occurs, we're so focused on like the immediate, like, there's no water, like yeah. surface water levels decrease, but a lot of these secondary impacts impact groundwater. And so things, so the things that I highlighted were seawater intrusion, which happens a lot in coastal areas land subsidence, which is also known as like, you know, land sinking when land sinks into when just things sink. And then both of these and other factors contribute to drinking water infrastructure damage. Um, parts of the infrastructure can be damaged because of land subsidence and seawater intrusion and just also other things that occur when drought conditions are prolonged such as they are in the West right now. Okay, yeah. So those are those are certainly three things that I don't really think about when I think of droughts. So um, I think it would be helpful to kind of take us through um, what each of these things mean and really how they can impact people's day-to-day -day lives um, in the U.S. So yeah, um, we can start with seawater intrusion or saltwater intrusion. I think those are like interchangeable terms, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what, what do we need to know about, about seawater intrusion? Yeah. So with seawater intrusion, it happens most, it happens in coastal areas. So when, you know, you have groundwater and you have ocean water or salt water, when those two meet, there's this area called a zone of transition that happens right in coastal areas. And that zone of transition is what prevents you know, salt water and salinated water from infiltrating that groundwater and making the groundwater, you know, undrinkable and incredibly salty. Um, but in a drought, when that groundwater level is depleted and it's not being replenished, those groundwater aquifers aren't being recharged, then there isn't enough groundwater to prevent that seawater from coming up into those groundwater aquifers. So that zone of transition keeps getting higher and higher and higher. And, you know, groundwater wells, you know, you can't adjust how deep they go. So yeah. those groundwater wells start pumping up salinated water that is not, you can't drink it. And 
it you know it's not great for crops it's just unusable as a like so it, it kind of has to do with like that the water table so if, yeah if the, if the groundwater the the fresh water that we use for drinking is depleted then that salt water can come in and kind of take over yeah it okay. it rises it gets into those aquifers and just the level keeps getting higher and higher and higher and that's when we run into saltwater intrusion. And so, but again, that happens mostly in coastal areas. So you see it a lot in, you know, California, especially right now with this prolonged drought. Um, and then, you know, continued pumping of that groundwater when it's not being recharged also contributes to this. Um, California actually just mandated that groundwater pumps have to have water meters installed now so that they can measure how much groundwater people and you know farmers agricultural they're pumping out so that they can have better groundwater management practices okay yeah and it's interesting because in places like california where the surface water is so limited um, they're kind of, they're turning to groundwater, but now with this seawater intrusion coming into play, like that kind of is like, all right, what's the next source? Like where, you know, it just, it's like a, a secondary impact that creates water scarcity, essentially. Yeah. 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 We think that groundwater is just always going to be there, but during a drought, it isn't being replenished because of lack of precipitation, lack of rainfall. They, it, the, those groundwater aquifers just aren't being recharged. And that's when, you know, you get groundwater shortages and it leads to yeah. the secondary consequences. Okay. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Very bright and yeah, right. cheery outlook. I know that was, the, that, was <laughs> that IPCC report. Everyone was yeah. like, okay, happy Monday. <laughs> um, so then the second one that you highlighted, which, um, also is one of those phenomenons that like I don't think people really believe is going to happen in their area or it's kind of one of those things where it's like oh you know landslides or or whatever it is that, that doesn't really happen here um so take us into land subsidence whatever that however that can affect people's day-to-day -day lives and and really how it has to do with groundwater and this whole idea of depleting resources. Yeah, so we talked about, you know, lack of rainfall contributes to lack of groundwater. Those groundwater aquifers aren't being recharged. So all that water takes up volume underneath the surface. And when that volume is being depleted and isn't being replenished, that's when soil starts to compact and that leads to, you know, just the ground sinking because mm -hmm. there's just not that volume underneath the surface to hold it up anymore. So that's right. when you get that sinking of the land. And it's happened a lot. It isn't really something that, like you said, we don't really think about it all that much, but it mm -hmm. definitely has an effect. And it's especially being seen in the West with this prolonged drought. Okay, got it. Um, all right, and so yeah. what you just mentioned kind of also, contributes to infrastructure damages, which is something that we certainly don't think about with droughts. It's not like an immediate correlation. Um, but yeah, take us into take us into that because when I was reading this article that you writ that you wrote, sorry, um, I was so surprised that this was kind of included in in this. So so take us through how these droughts can impact infrastructure. Yeah, so those two um, phenomena I just mentioned, seawater intrusion and um, land sinking, those can contribute to infrastructure damage. You know, it's like for example, when land sinks, there are pipes running underneath the ground and everything and whatever, whatever, and those pipes can break. Um, contamination from seawater, you know, it can render some groundwater aquifers unusable. And then you have to switch over to a different source and that right. you have to switch over infrastructure. You have to build new infrastructure, replace old infrastructure. And I think it also just highlights the need, you know, for better water infrastructure in the United States, right. because if you're having, especially now with climate change affecting our daily lives, you know, we're going to be facing this. And so 
if we don't have the infrastructure to deal with it, then we're just going to have to keep replacing all of this damaged infrastructure and the cost can add up. Yeah, yeah. And it can render supplies unusable. Like if, if you're in a certain area where distribution pipes are, you know, completely out of commission, mm-hmm. I don't think that people in the U.S. kind of understand what it's like to not have, you know, running water. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So you mentioned infrastructure and obviously the infrastructure bill passed in the Senate a couple days ago. Um, so it's headed to the house and that's something that we'll definitely be talking about either next week or the week after um, on Instagram live. I know we've done um, a previous live on infrastructure, but as you said, it's, super important and it really um it really contributes to a lot of different issues with water droughts um and just yeah boil water advisories are another thing that we've been seeing a lot of um and that also has to do with infrastructure so yeah (laughs) lots of great things yeah (laughs) um okay well great any last thoughts or anything else you wanted to add I mean just you know when we're facing these drought conditions it's just so important to conserve water whenever possible Mm -hmm. you know reusing water is super important if you're living in an area that is facing drought conditions right now you know repurposing water is super important so that we can have as much clean drinking water as possible yeah Yeah, totally agree. Um, And so if you are living in those really drought prone areas in the southwestern parts of the United States, you know, these are things that you definitely want to be thinking about and, you know, perhaps raising to your local government. If this is if this is something that that people are proposing solutions to or even just really talking about, um, I think that's that's definitely definitely an action step that everyone can take. So for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Emily. Yeah. Um, This is awesome. I think people learned a bunch and we'll have your blog linked in our bio. So people will be able to read it and, um, and kind of look at some of the sources that you pulled for this live. Um, But yeah, so I hope that everyone takes this seriously and understands that droughts have way more consequences than just water availability. So yeah. Thanks again. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy Wednesday and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.